guys. I can't believe the year is winding down now and it's actually time for my top five, but I'm pretty thrilled right now because it's just so nice to be reminded of how many quality movies we got this year. But it actually wasn't too difficult pinpointing my top five this time around because these five really did stand out for me and they struck a chord for a variety of reasons. So jumping right into it, my number five of 2017 is I, Tanya. There is so much I love about this one, but a big part of the reason I've enjoyed watching it many times since my first viewing is because of the entertainment value and the energy to it. I love the style Craig Gillespie ran with for this one. The pacing is on point, the music choices really give the movie a nice boost at just the right moments. Of course, Margot Robbie is fantastic, and I'm really rooting for Alice and Janney in that supporting actress category right now. But I also have to point out Sebastian Stan. I wish he was getting more recognition for his work in this one. And as for the story, I, Tanya doesn't give any of the bad behavior a pass, but it does make a point to dig into why these characters, particularly Tanya, wind up in this position. And when the judge delivers the ruling towards the end, I was really struck by how I processed and reacted to it. At number four now, I've got It. The Stephen King source material is a very big book, and it's a book with so much world building and backstory, and there was just no way Andy Muschietti and the writers were gonna be able to cram it all into one two hour and 15 minute movie, but they really did a fantastic job adapting it for the film format in a way that had so much depth and intensity and also reminded me a lot of how I felt about the losers in King's book, like they were a real group of friends that I wanted to continue spending time with. It is a very effective horror movie and I love how they represent Pennywise's ability to prey on your worst fears and his effect on the town of Derry too, but the element that surprised and delighted me most is how they bring the Losers Club together, how you fall in love with them, how this terrifying experience changes them, and that winds up making it an especially enjoyable coming of age horror movie that really sticks with you. Now on to my number three, and that's where I've got Get Out. What a brilliant, creative way to both entertain and say something I couldn't shake it out long after I first saw it, nor did I want to. It's a really effective thrill all on its own, and that doesn't change on repeat viewings. Rather, it becomes even more powerful. It's really astounding to me that this is Jordan Peele's feature directorial debut because the build in this one is so intense. The balance between chills and comedy is spot on. And there are so many moments and plot points that really require just the right visual design to be believable and effective. And Peele just gets it all right. The whole ensemble needs a lot of credit for this one as well. Allison Williams, Bradley Whitford, Caleb Landry Drones, Lil Rel Howery, of course, and then there's Daniel Kaluuya. I am just so thrilled that this put Kaluuya on the map and just on a path to becoming a very familiar name and face because you're experiencing this whole thing from his perspective and you're rooting for him, you're concerned for him, and he really lets you feel like you're trying to solve that mystery right along with him also. And number two, I have The Shape of Water. Guillermo del Toro is just a master when it comes to creativity and building atmosphere. And he paints such a beautiful picture and story with this one. I love the color scheme, the abundance of teal with red accents, the lighting, the camera movement, the production design is incredible, and so is the score, and then just how it all comes together to deliver something that feels real, but also like something that has a magical fairy tale-like quality to it. And then the story that unfolds within that space is so enchanting. The creature makeup is astounding, and Doug Jones does so much with it by bringing such a striking physicality to the character. And the fact that it's pretty effortless to get on board this budding relationship between the creature and Sally Hawkins' character is just something else, especially when you add in how limited their dialogue is. This is just such a touching and riveting exploration of what it means to be a monster and also a stellar depiction of the beauty of love and uniqueness. Finally, my number one movie of 2017, it's Call Me By Your Name. I heard fantastic things about this one from film festivals and even knew to look out for one particular scene that would conjure all the tears, but 
Having the heads up didn't really matter at all. This experience just rattled me to the core in the best possible way. I think I drove home from that first screening with tears in my eyes the whole way. And it's because it is a deeply moving celebration of love and being proud of having those feelings regardless of social expectations and what others might think. Army Hammer is fantastic, Timothy Chalamet is a true revelation, and director Luca Guadagnino does such an incredible job completely engulfing you in that setting and giving you so much access to his main characters. It is a very well-made movie in every respect and also has one of my favorite songs of the year in it, but what earns it the top spot on my personal best of the year list is because it really does transcend the viewing experience and it gave me something really special and important to experience and then go home with. So there it is. That is my top five of 2017. Thank you guys so much for watching this and also for checking out all of the other content we've put out this year. Really is an honor to get to share so many great films with you guys and I'm so grateful that I have the opportunity to do this. So thank you again. Happy holidays and I'll see you soon.